Welcome Thunderbird Nation to the Thunderbird Coaches Show. I'm your host, John Smith. With me today is the head football coach of your Thunderbirds, Mr. Delane Fitzgerald. We have some special guests with us in the studio as well, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Mr. Austin Leusa. Welcome. And we have Lyle Santos. Guys, thanks for joining us today. Of course. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, the O-line, obviously, you know, they're not kind of uh, – they don't get a lot of stats. They don't get a lot of accolades, kind of the the, the unsung heroes. But we we're, we're want to put a spotlight on you gentlemen. You guys have been playing great. And we'll go we'll go deeper into the, the play here in a minute. But we just want to uh, just – let the people know the O-line are people too. Yeah. So, Coach, uh, look, we, we played Haveline Christian. Uh, we had a ball game on Saturday. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was kind of a chilly day. We had a little sparse crowd. I think there was a lot going in in town. Uh, but those that showed up uh, were rowdy and, and had a good time. We, I saw the Mario Brothers went shirtless in 50-degree weather. I mean, there's some, there's some fans out there that, that love their T-Birds. Let's break down Abilene Christian and SUU. You like the Halloween spirit, but the shirtless Mario would not have been the way I'd have went. Me neither. No, I'd, I'd, I've been like the Alaskan Eskimo. Yes. Yeah, but anyway. You could hey. dress You could dress up hey. and be spectacular in warm clothes. Correct. Yeah. Hey, ha- hats off to those two young men. Great outfit. Yeah. Uh, not, not my pick, but great outfit. Abilene Christian. Yes. Uh, John played well start to finish. Yeah. Um, if it, and the story needs to be told, if we were going to be flat, um, it, it was not after one, one of their defensive backs and goes over to our offensive line group who we have here with us today and decides he's going to celebrate in the middle of our group while they're in stretch. This is pre, um, pre-game here. He got real, got real, real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, my man Austin here got a couple stiff arms in early. I think, <laughs> I think Cody Coleman got a shot in. Um, he knows not to do that ever again. Um, but John, if there was a chance we were going to be flat on Saturday, it all went away about 95 minutes before kickoff. Got it. So, a lot, lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, John came out, played well on offense, played well on defense for four quarters. It, it's hard to pick out a lot of specifics, but the run game was absolutely the highlight okay. of our offense. Uh, Justin, tw- 21 pass attempts. He was off target on two out of 21. Threw the ball really well, really accurate. Uh, these guys protected Justin back there and then opened up a lot of big holes for the run game. It's one of those deals and your old man standing there, you're like, I'd like to play running back today. Playing running back today would be fun for me too. Oh, yeah. Shoot, yeah. I probably could have got 30 yards running behind these guys. Before the hamstring blew. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. And 30 is probably a push. Before you pulled your me. ham bone. Yeah, yeah exactly right. It but, flip yeah. over on, flipped over on defense. And the difference in that score on Saturday is, is our defense turned them over three times. Yes. The three interceptions, and we scored off of all three interceptions, scored touchdowns off of them. Big difference in that football game. And then our defense is able to stay focused and have a sense of urgency. And we shut them out in the second half on Saturday yeah look I have a I have a few notes um I I I I noticed that we played complete football both on offense and defense we played it for four quarters I mean there wasn't there wasn't really a a letdown there wasn't a a a time in that game that I thought okay here's the lull Uh, it was go from start to finish which I love we were solid on special teams which has been a change from the last month but we were solid on teams also yeah and uh look 308 net rushing yards Uh, we haven't seen that yet this year and and I I from the Tarleton game to the Austin P game to now at Abilene Christian I've seen a noted improvement in the run game uh coach tell us a little bit about um how how you've motivated and is it is it just a, a different opponent that we're playing that we're getting these bigger or is it an effort from the o-line to really get out to that second level yeah it's, it's it has nothing to do with me matt white and tim arnold are doing a great job coaching our offensive linemen and getting them ready each week our mentality is changing for for the plus yeah it, it's changing in a positive direction each week and we just have a mentality and an attitude that we're a little more weight on our fingers a little more weight on our hands and we're gonna get off the ball and just get after people in the run game yeah um john a lot a lot of fun to watch but the credit needs to go to matt white and tim arnold and the coaching job that they're doing and then these guys and, and their teammates to responding to the coaching yeah awesome awesome um lyle tell us a little bit about i mean you're kind of the leader of that group um What's it been like? Start of the year, young group, by the way. We got sophomore, 
uh, Junior. We got a bunch of guys that are coming back. John, they back. all return. Yeah, yeah. They're we, all back. We got a the, bunch of guys that are coming all, back. They're all back along with all of the tight ends and all the running backs. Yeah. So, so what's it like um, learning and progressing? Um, I'm sure there's growing pains. How do you guys stay together in the midst of um, some adversity? And then how nice is it to uh, put up 308 rushing yards now? I feel like you don't have a choice but to stay together as offensive line. You know, we're, we're five is one. And, I mean, just like Coach said, it's it's a big credit to Coach White just keeping us together every single week. You know, we don't have a choice but to get better every single day at practice, every single day in the weight room. And then the accountability as well between the offensive linemen is huge. Yeah. So that, that helps a, a big amount as well. Austin, we talk about playing for the guy next to you. It's literal in your case, right? Like it is, uh, you're literally playing for the guy next to you. Tell us about how uh, you communicate and how you guys work together as a unit. Yeah, I think it starts in the, at the beginning of the week um, when we start practice up on um, Sunday. You know, we go through walkthroughs, we go to corrections, and then that builds over to Tuesdays practice, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and then mm -hmm. Fridays as well. But just understanding and knowing the guy that you're playing next to you is going to get his job done, I think that's a big emphasis that – the coaches have stressed, and especially Coach White and Coach Arnold, um, they've done a good job of keeping us together um, and kind of letting us understand and giving us that, that space to where we can come together, play together, and then eventually win together. Yeah, I mean, y'all are, uh, you guys have a nickname. What do you guys call yourself? Lyle. <laughs> yeah, He's Lyle. He's smiling at it. me. No. Yeah. No, there's a, we have a few nicknames for Austin, but we leave that to, uh, uh we'll keep, we leave that to Colin. He's talking about NSFW. a group nickname. Hey, I'm oh, talking about a group, group nickname. nickname. You guys, yeah. yeah. No, just, just the O line. Just Unless the line. Coach Fitz can come up with one, but very original uh -huh. guys. No, yeah. the mules. <laughs> the mules. We throw in big, we throw yeah. big birds sometimes. The yeah, big, big birds. birds. Yeah, big birds. Okay, the big bird. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, <clears throat> look. Um, yeah. Tip our caps to you. We got a clean sheet, no sacks. We got 308 net yards. Uh, it's, it's just awesome to see that. Pretty good day at the office. Yeah, come on. Um, you know, I, I've I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I never played football, not a snap, right? And and if you look at me, you realize I was built for golf. I was not built to do what you guys do. But I I appreciate and love the game of football. I love to watch uh, teams, right? The building of a team, um, and then the execution of a team. And uh, as you know, I'm in my 15th year of observing football, like pretty specifically man i love watching a good old line it's where football games are won and lost in my opinion yep. and uh look you're also a unique position the o-line is probably one of the only uh uh positions in all of sports really that um doesn't have like a i mean i guess you could you could you could say, okay, um, I got a pancake or I got something, but there's really no stats. Like you guys are defenders of a position that gets a lot of stats, uh, but and, and you're there really to protect and then open up space. John, John, they are the best people in all of sports. Yeah, it is the only position in all of sports where they do all of their work with the back turned to the ball. If they're ever working with their back towards the ball, they're wrong. They're in the wrong position. Um, it, it Offensive linemen produce the greatest people. Off, guys that play college offensive line go on to be the best employers and employees. They go on to be the best husbands, best fathers because of what they put in every day at the position. Yeah, well <clears> – <throat> Yeah, uh, we wanted to put a spotlight on you guys today. We wanted to uh, do some spotlight on the position itself. And you guys, uh, you're just uh, models of um, how you can how you can get together, have a have a group of young men um, learning together, and then now here you are, uh, a few games into the season, really starting to to pick it up and understand. So in your two lives, that's the first time y'all have ever been called a model. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When I was when I was 240, yeah, I might have Here we go. I might have heard that before. Here we go. Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a few good pictures he said. <laughs> need, to, uh, need to hike our pants up. <laughs> shoot. Let's yeah, let's talk about the defense uh for a minute so we can we can uh, get the heads back down uh, to normal size, but um look, we had three interceptions in that game. Uh sacked the quarterback three times. Defensive line going good. Uh, DB's going good. Let's talk about the defense in that game. 
Yeah, A.J. Felton with his third interception in two games. Um, Trey Gola Collard, who we had on the show a couple of weeks ago with his first interception of the season. Uh, I just got to make fun of Trey a little bit over in the football building. I said, Trey, I thought you were going your whole career without one. <laughs> Finally found one, but a really, really good play. The way he broke on that ball, good play. Oh, that's perfect. And then Jordan Washington's interception, which is a little bit of a look what I found because it went through the kid's hands and landed in his lap. But then he did a great job on the return, broke a couple tackles, 30-yard yeah. return, set us up with an easy score. Um, so th those three. Uh, John, I thought the I thought John Kelling's defensive scheme on Saturday uh, was as good as we've seen all year. But he, he was they, they were dialed into what Abilene Christian was going to do, and he did a nice job there. Um, we have to make up for some deficiencies at the defensive end position right now by bringing people and, and moving a defensive line and bringing linebackers and DBs, and we were able to do that and do it with success on Saturday. Um, great, great team effort. And then you get the normal. You get your normal blue-collar effort from Connor Cullimore and Aubrey Nelms. Yeah. They're going to run around make plays and yeah. play well, um, but excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just a it's a testament to John Kelling's defense that um, you know these guys came in. Uh, I don't I don't know those of you that are just listening. You gotta you gotta understand the receivers for uh, Abilene Christian were like six four six five. They're the biggest team in the country. Yeah, they were wild. I mean, I've been to a lot of football games. That by far was the biggest FCS team, at least in height and, and stature that I've seen. Um, just massive and so you know we if if you're if you're aj felton and you're you're maybe 5 10 maybe uh and you're looking at this dude coming at you that's six five aj can't stand on the center block and grab five ten yeah no, you're, but but he plays big right i mean if yeah. you look at if he's well efforts, well 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 of a player when he when he's dialed in yeah when he's dialed in and good between his ears not nobody's going to beat him yeah and and despite the size difference uh we played much bigger and i think they maybe played a little smaller than than uh their physical appearance um and and John Kelly's defense really exposed. Our some kids of those wanted things. to play on Saturday. Our yeah. kids were excited about the opportunity to play ball. Amen. Well, let's keep it up. Um, let's we'll we'll talk about our upcoming uh, tilt here against Lincoln University um, in a bit. But before that, I got a, a quick story I need to tell. This is uh, uh, Travis Harris comes in. Travis Harris is a lifelong friend of Coach Fitz from Virginia. Guy flies all the way over to watch a game. And uh, he came to me and he said, John, I just want you to know that I just had lunch at the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. And he said, I listen to your show every week. And he said, I got to Cedar City. I fe felt obligated. I felt like I had to go over to the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen to, uh, to, to get a bite and hang out, have some drinks. And, and look, any of you out there that are listening the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen is now a continental destination. We go from East Coast to West Coast and everywhere in between. If you're in Cedar City, ladies Tra and gentlemen. Travis's highlight after the game was it was not the game. It was that he got to meet Reggie during the I game. know. He was pumped. Yeah, pumped. Yeah, he's got like, to see Reggie. I got to see Reggie Silva there uh, on the sideline. It was uh, it was a good moment. Uh, but uh, shout out Reggie. to Travis for making the trip. Yeah, great. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, glad to have him with us this weekend. Yeah, and Reggie's Reggie's sponsorship is starting to pay dividends. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. Um, look, the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. I mean, it is. It's it's it is officially a continental distant destination, and uh, it's a great place to hang out, get some drinks, uh, have some have some great food from their kitchen there. Uh, great environment there. Uh, when, if you're in Cedar City visiting or if you live here, head on down to the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen. They'll treat you right, and uh, they'll fill you up. Um, if you're there for a great time and you've had a few, just make sure that you are responsible. Never drive drunk. Make sure that you're uh, uh, enjoying yourself in a responsible manner. Uh, but we uh, we thank the Warehouse Bar Plus Kitchen for being a sponsor of the show and, and Southern Utah University Athletics. Um, that's going to lead us into the next segment, gentlemen, the Visit Cedar City and Brian Head Student Spotlight. And the Student Spotlight, we've got two guests today. Um, Coach, I'm going to have you just introduce uh, your, your guests here on your left and your right, and then we'll dig in to, to see who these guys are and give them a, a little highlight on the show. 
John, never on this show do I sit over here and feel small, but next to these two, <laughs> yeah, feeling a little small here. At, to, to my left is um, uh, Lyle Santos. Lyle is a resident of Las Vegas. We had Lyle on the show last year. Um, he is our starting left guard, does a great job, also two-year team captain for us, um, but great young man on and off the field. And, and you, you said it, one, one of the leaders of our offensive line and doing a great job over the last couple of weeks protecting our quarterback and running running the football. Um, I, I feel privileged to have Lyle on our football team and to be able to coach him. To our right is Mr. Austin Lelusa. Am I correct in saying South Jordan? West Jordan. West Jordan High School. Um, from West Jordan High School, um, Austin is our starting right tackle and doing a great job, again, protecting our quarterback and running the football. Um, Austin's one of our emotional leaders on the offensive line, also one of our emotional leaders on offense because when he's got it dialed in and fired up, we kind of go as he goes. Um, Austin comes from a great family, really enjoyed our time uh, with his mom in the recruiting process and having his mom around. And then Austin right now has a younger bro brother, Lecca, that, that has signed with us and Lecco will be home in a year, year and a half and it will be back to play offensive line for us also. A couple of years from now we may have two Leilusas playing offensive line at the same time. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. That excites me. Uh, welcome gentlemen. Um, since there's two of you, I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of, uh, we'll start with, with Austin, we'll, we'll discuss and then I'll move over to Lyle so so we're not jumping back and forth. But um, Austin, it's, it's Le Leusa. Or yeah. Leusa. Uh, it's Leusa. Leusa. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, you, uh, Coach said you're from West Jordan. Tell us what you're majoring here in school. Yeah. So I'm majoring in criminal justice with a minor in political science. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, tell us. Tell us what you hope that that uh, major will uh, uh, accomplish uh, later in life. Yeah. Uh, one of my dreams growing up as a kid is um, I've always wanted to become a firefighter. Um, just thought it was the coolest thing in the world growing up, and um, I always got you know watching those shows as a kid sure it was, it was it was just fun it was a good time and so um came home from serving my 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 service mission for my church and where'd I, you go i went to the philippines hey <laughs> shout out the philippines and i knew i just can i just wanted to continue to help people and i felt that that was the best way that i could yeah i love it i love that uh look you you uh naturally have a um a desire to protect people quarterbacks yeah. running backs Helping people is a is uh, yeah, <laughs> Lyle. Um, it's uh, it's it's a credit to you that that yeah. uh, that you look to serve in that way, yeah. and uh, you know, good luck with that after football. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> what's your favorite uh, class in that major? Like, what's what's a class that gets you going? Um, or professor? I think one of my favorite professors I've had so far is Laney Smith. Laney Smith. Yeah. Um, and I've I've always wanted to take a victimology class here. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to do the science, the fire science program, but sure. it's in the summer, oh. so can't do it just with summer workouts. Sure. But, um, you know those types of classes have always taken interest in mine, and then obviously with my political science part. Um, I don't know. Some would say I'm good at arguing, so I think that's why. I'm good at <laughs> some that. would say I'm good at arguing. Um, what about your favorite food, man? Like what what uh, keeps the weight going? My favorite food. Um, Probably just be steak and rice, to be honest. It's simple. Um, I thought you say something like adobo or no, or something like I that. I mean, I haven't had Filipino, real Filipino food in a long time. So. I got you, dude. <laughs> I can cook. I'm yeah. gonna get you. I'm gonna get you going. Yeah, on my there. wife makes a pretty good steak, so. Okay, cool. Um, obviously, you're married. Yeah. Um, any kids? Yeah, so I have two kids. Um, our oldest daughter, she's gonna turn two here in December, wow. and then we just had our second kid, our second daughter about three weeks ago during congratulations uh, brother appreciate it yeah, yeah we had heard uh, <clears throat> the weekend of tarleton got it yeah <clears throat> got it um what's your favorite thing about cedar city this is the this is the visit cedar city brian head spotlight uh you and your wife and your kids what, what's the what's the thing that you like to do here in cedar city um we just like the small town feel yeah uh, we just we like being able to go down main street that's 35 miles an hour and yes and kind of just see everyone and and just get that whole feel of it and um you know nothing beats this mount these mountains yeah um and it's just the camaraderie of this town is it's a it's a it's a tight-knit town as well so we kind of like that um and just you know a lot of people in this town are very likable so Thank you. Yeah. I'm from this he town. He wasn't talking about no, you. No, he was. I think <laughs> he was talking about I, the rest I, of He them. looked at me square in the eyes when he said <laughs> that. I yeah. felt it. So, 
uh, that's awesome, yeah. man. That's uh, we appreciate you being here in Cedar City. And you were uh, you were a recruit that you came straight from high school. You didn't go uh, to another school and transfer. You no. you were you're being a T bird since day one. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. We appreciate you. All right, our other visit Cedar City and Brian Head student spotlight is going to go on Lyle Santos, my guy. What's How's up? it going, dude? Good. Really good. Um, we're going to kind of ask some similar questions. Uh, we know you're from Las Vegas. Coach pointed that out. What high school? Arborview High School. Arborview. Yep. Best any high other, school in Vegas. Any <laughs> any other uh, T-Birds? Everybody from, from Arborview will have you try to believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the, Gorman yeah. doesn't count. They get to recruit. They just – <laughs> Good school, but they don't count. I'd say Arborview. I got it. Arborview. When, when, when me and Trent were playing. so That's what I was yeah. going to say. When you got any other T-Birds? When Arborview High School brings their varsity and JV up for team camp, <laughs> it is a event. It's different it, now, too, though. They got a different coach. I'm with them. I agree. It's it's crazy. It's a lot different. They roll up in Cedar City, and, yeah. and, and people feel them. <laughs> roll up in I Cedar so, City yeah. and act like they're still on the strip. <laughs> I guess so. Even though we're like on the complete opposite side of town from the strip, that's oh, just they just how bring they roll, the Vegas swag. That's yeah. all. They just bring yep. the Vegas. Coach swag. Fitz likes it. We, likes we have it. A, we have a fight break out in in a var. It's it's team camp, and, and there's 12 teams here, 17 teams. It doesn't matter. We have a fight break out in a, on a varsity field, and you don't even have to ask. You look over and know that it's our views involved. <laughs> that's because they're and dogs. At man. the exact there same at the exact same time on a different part of campus, there's a scuffle in the JV game. Arbor, and you know, Ar- hey, Arbor, same time. Time. Yeah, they, like, they just hey, bring the dogs. That's like, all. It's almost like y'all, y'all are on a timer. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, who are who are some other guys that are from Arborview that are on the team? Uh, Trent Whalen yep. and Gavin Lipkin. We've had like since we've always came to this camp since I think 2010. We Arborview's come to uh, SUU. We've had probably more than like 20 guys here, but me, Trent, and Gavin right now. A little Arborview. John, they, John, they produce good football players. Yeah, it's yeah. good football. Good football players. Love to hear it. Um, <clears throat> what about you? What are you? What are you studying? Let's focus a little bit on the student athlete of the student yeah. part, or student part of the student athlete here. Yeah. What do you? What are you studying? What's your major? Communications. Okay. Yep. I should be graduating in December, so that means I'll walk in the spring in April, right? Okay. Is that what it is? Yeah. Don't ask so. me. I'm a dropout. <laughs> yeah. Oh shoot. It's all right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I should be graduating in December, and then I'll be walking in April. So yeah. Awesome. Almost done. Man, that's that's a credit to you. I love to see the guys come play, get their degrees. Uh, you know, fill yeah. their fill their heads full of good competitive thoughts, but also some good education and some oh, yeah. some good scholastic work in there. Yep. Um, what about you? What's your favorite uh, uh, professor spotlight? Like who 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 really has has uh, touched you as a as a uh, as a student? Definitely Hayden Coombs and and Matt Barton as well. Okay. Both of those guys are in the communications department. They're great. They're awesome dudes. They've always. You know, supported all the athletes and everything. So I'd say those guys for sure. Most excellent. Mm-hmm. I love I love Hayden Coombs. Yeah. Hayden, Hayden Hayden gets a lot of run on this show. He yeah. does. Yeah. He's awesome. He's a good uh, professor a, too. I was gonna say there might be a reason because yeah. I think he really he really loves the kids. Whether yeah. you play sports or not, mm-hmm. he's he is your advocate. And when he you really, get when you get the good person slash professor, yes. yeah. When you get when you get both those things, yeah, it stands out. Yeah, it does. It it, it stands out. So shout out Hayden again. Uh, you know Hayden's probably going to get me a nice Christmas card because we keep we keep <laughs> getting his to. pay raise so already need, need, set needs, up. Need some money in the card. That's right. Uh-huh. Um, money to the team. No, yeah. And then uh, and then Lyle, talk to us about uh, a few of your uh, favorite things to do in Cedar City. Well, I mean, you you got you've kind of got your girlfriends here. <laughs> yep. She plays for the basketball team. Mm-hmm. Shout out women's basketball. Wag your girlfriend's champs. name is Sam Johnson. Yep. And she is the daughter of who? Tracy. Tracy Mason. Tracy yep. Mason. That's yep. right. The yep. head coach. So the, the women's head coach here. His daughter. Uh, Lyle has a long-term relationship with. Lyle falls into the same category as Connor Cullimore. He is the second best athlete in his <laughs> relationship. <laughs> No, oh, no, no way! Shoot. I love Sam. She's a great player, but I, I gotta, I gotta take that one home for me. Man. Yeah, I like, I like. Have you the, ever, have you won a game of horse since you met her? A no. game of four horse. horse. Not a oh, chance. maybe I know I beat Austin before. Probably no, 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 no. We're no, not no. talking like, about you no. and Austin. No, we're talking. No. Yeah, good, I actually good try, did. Though. I did. Me and Sam played one on one in like twenty twenty. Not one on one. Have yeah, you won a game of horse? That. No, we're talking about chance. Hey, hey, yeah, you're in court. You only answer the question. In court. Oh, man. No, I haven't. But that's it's, something we got to do, right, for, too. For, the, for those of y'all out there, Lyle's girlfriend's a very good basketball player. She is. Yep. She is. And, and look, uh, the, the WAC champions um, represented SUU there at the big dance. I mean, 
uh, we, we love our women's basketball team. So shout out uh, Tracy and her group. Um, what about what about what gets you going in the uh, kitchen? What's oh, what's your favorite food? Same thing as Austin steak and rice, steak, chicken, rice. That's my favorite. That's my go to. It's, yeah. it's probably a great thing. Never yeah. could clean warm up. protein. Yeah. Never could warm up to rice. Really? Hey, I'll I'll tell you what, it's easy. Now, hey, once you get old and fat, then you don't want the <laughs> carbs. So you avoid it a little more, but I never could warm up to that. I, I was uh vehemently opposed to eating rice and then I went on a on a church mission to the Philippines and they eat rice for breakfast, they eat rice for lunch, they eat rice for dinner. Yep. They eat rice for a snack. Yeah. The noodles made of rice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is rice, rice, rice. And at about month three, after I'd lost 25 pounds, I thought, I, I better start getting after this rice. <laughs> and now go. I love it. Put, put yeah. some muscle on you too, I bet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. So what about, what about you, the favorite thing about Cedar City? You gotta think about food again. My favorite thing is going to Ninja Ninja Steakhouse. Okay. That's my spot. That's my Steak favorite thing about Cedar. But yeah. I mean, I'm with Austin. The small town feel is awesome too. Coming from Vegas, it's not like from where I live in Vegas. It's not. It's not the Strip. It's not like super, you know, crazy exciting. So it's kind of similar. It's just way bigger yeah. there. But I think there's a lot to love here in Cedar, like Austin said too. The mountains too. It's beautiful, especially ever since I've been with Sam. She loves to go up the mountain. I actually went to Zion yesterday. We drove through. And that was crazy. You nowhere like nowhere in the country you have that in your backyard other it's than here. It's, so, it's a gorgeous yeah. place in the world, isn't mm -hmm. it? And I'm I'm really starting to enjoy that too. You know, she she begs me to go and go up the mountain, so it's uh, something she's I look forward to. She's getting you out of your comfort exactly zone, there. and she's letting you explore <laughs> this beautiful world. Shout yep. out, Sam. Yep. Um, all right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for for being a part of the show. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about Lincoln University here in a second, but I wanted to just personally. Shout out Lyle and, and Austin for, for being on the show, showing that O-Line are people too. They've got faces. They've got uh, families. Uh, we can't forget the O-Line play. And uh, next time you're watching football, watch that battle on the line. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's a really cool thing. It's not highlighted uh, on ESPN much, but I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than, than having an O-Lineman get to the second level and just mow a linebacker. I love it. Um, Thanks for being here. That's the that's the visit Cedar City uh, and Brian Head student spotlight. Coach, we uh, we have a game coming up on Saturday. Um, it's another home game. We've got the Lincoln University Oaks, um, another unique uh, um, mascot, the Oaks. Uh, I don't know what it's about California, but they got a couple trees as uh, mascots. We'll just leave it there, but. Um, tell us a little bit about Lincoln University. What can we expect uh, coming up on Saturday? And uh, let's 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 preview the Lincoln University Oaks. Most important thing about Saturday is it's Senior Day, so so we're going to say goodbye to two handfuls of seniors, and we need to do it the right way. We need to see them off in style and, and send them out the way that it should go. Um, so that that is going to happen on Saturday. Um, that's so some young men, John, that we'll talk. We can talk about next week, but so some young men that have given their heart and soul to this university and this football program, and, and have done a great job for us, some just this year and some the last two years. Um, but that's the biggest thing. We, we play the Lincoln University Oaks out of uh, Oakland, California. Is is that what the Oak is for? Short short for Oakland, Lincoln, and Oakland. I want to say yeah. that. Yeah. So it's not short for Okra and it's not short for Oak Tree. It's it's. Uh, I, I just put that. I'm on Oakland. A tree. I am yeah. not a smart man. <laughs> I just put that together. Um, <laughs> Lincoln is coming in here. Uh, that they new offensive coordinator, brand new offense from last year. They're playing much better, playing improved. Um, they have an FBS drop down quarterback who who is playing well um, and doing a nice job. Uh, six five, two hundred pounds, stands in the pocket and delivers the ball. Does a nice job. But they're much improved from last year on offense. Turn around on defense, and they were able to keep their three or four good players on defense. And then they've added some young men. Um, a lot of transfers, John, but they got a safety running around and started some games and played some football at Ohio State. Um, and he's oh, he's yeah. a dude um, sta standing back there do doing a nice job. Th this past Saturday, they played Kennesaw State, who's one of the new FBS teams in the country. And Kennesaw has 85 scholarships, and Lincoln had ample opportunity to beat them. Wow. And ended up coming up short, 28-12. to 12, But it was a ball game for a long time, and Lincoln had chances to win the football game. Um, we have a – 
how do, how do I say it? They're going to be a formidable opponent for us this Saturday. Can't take them lightly. We need to have a really good week of practice and then need to, need, need to come out and execute with an intensity and a passion for football on Saturday. Yeah, definitely can't look uh, look past Lincoln University. Not going, not going to. No, that, that's not an option. Can't do not it. going yeah. to. Yeah. Um, so I was talking to uh, Tanner Esplin, who's a SUU super fan, right? Mm-hmm. He's a he's an ambassador for the university. Gigantic. A, f- uh, a fun guy to be around. Oh, he's great. Yeah. No, he's he's in fact, yeah. Just shout out Tanner Esplin. He's he's a he's a great human being. Loves SUU athletics. Loves the university. Loves the town. And uh, we were talking about uh, Lincoln, and he said, hey, they've got a safety that played for Ohio State. And he's a big o- Ohio State guy, too. I mean, we'll, we'll let that slide. But, um, and he said, this guy is – What would make, would make a man from out west root for Ohio State? Yeah, I think there's some family ties. I think his dad might have might have taught out there or, or something like that. I think you meet, there, you I meet, think a, couple, some you meet a couple Ohio State fans, and you wonder why, why a man from Ohio would root <laughs> for Ohio State. <laughs> So anyway, Tanner was Tanner was telling me about the safety that uh, yeah, I mean he he not only went there but he played and he was he was a a, a, a decent player. Good player. Yeah, there's there's some extenuating circumstances that landed him there at, at their the best defensive of- player last year was was a defensive end. He, he's still there and he he's six six and two thirty five two forty and when, when he wants to play and he's motivated causes some havoc. Yeah, but he'll be coming off the edge on Saturday and he's a force to be reckoned with. Got, the the middle linebacker number five good football player. I remember there were some guys uh, maybe undersized but played like I mean like a house of fire right mm-hmm. and and they got something to prove too every every single time they go out right mm-hmm. so uh <clears throat> what can we expect game plan are we, are we going to continue this this run game are we uh I mean, what is it what does it look like uh against their defense do you think I'm gonna sit here and tell you what no, the game plan is no, for Saturday no probably not you know uh, maybe in a generality yeah, when you're when you're when you're clicking on all cylinders like we are right now, we've played ten straight good quarters of football. We scored ten straight quarters, which is what good offenses do. Yeah. Um, we're going to continue to attempt to score each quarter that this week, John, and we're we're going to mix it up, run pass, and we'll be balanced or close to balanced. But we're going to mix it up, run pass, turn around on defense. We're always going to attack. We're four three two high, and we play an attacking style of defense, and we're going to do that. And then the goal, and we we won. We won the special teams battle last weekend. The goal this week will be to win the special teams battle. Each and every week you have about 25 special teams plays. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Um, But about 25 special teams play. We're we're trying to win 18-plus out of the 25. Yeah, awesome. So, I mean, it really, it's it's not like uh, you're going to change the game plan just because it's Lincoln University. We're going to go out there and try to execute uh, the game plan. Uh, we're not going to look past these guys, especially uh, their last weeks. You're the showing. only one talking about looking past them now. <laughs> well, I just want to make you're sure that no one does. You're the only one talking I'm about I'm just it. making sure that no one does. Cause no, we're not looking past we, we We are well aware that, that each Saturday is 9% of our season, and we're going to take care of the 9% this week. Excellent, excellent. Um, well, look, that's that's. Uh, I, I just think that um, we need Cedar City to show out for our seniors. We would love uh, the crowd to get out there and get crazy. Weather's going to be a little warmer this week, so come on out, uh, enjoy the the effort that these young men put into their craft, and uh, show out for those seniors. Again, that senior day uh, is uh, kick is one o'clock, one p.m. One p.m. Um, at uh, at <clears throat> the stadium there in Cedar City, uh, we need you out there. We need we need really what we need is those students, man. We uh, the students need to come and appreciate those seniors and and be a part of their their last home game. Um, speaking of speaking of uh, just just um, support in general, um, we need to talk about Thunderbird Athletic Foundation. It's the fundraising arm of SU Athletic Department. Uh, the primary goal of the, the Thunderbird Athletic Foundation is to enhance the lives of student athletes, providing them with resources to be elite in competition, the classroom, and the community. Um, click the Donate tab at suutbirds.com to learn more about how you can support SU Athletics. If you'd like to donate specifically to the football program, you can scan the QR code on the screen. Um, thanks to all our TAF and Touchdown Club supporters for your continued and ongoing support. Uh, again, um, We've got a rebuild from the athletic department side. Um, you, you're well aware of the, the rebuild that you're, you're um, 
progressing in football. There's a lot of good things, but there's a lot of things that we need help with. John, the, la- the last two weeks that may have been the turning point in our football program. Um, so let's see a different bunch of young men, a bunch of young men that went, oh, two weeks ago went, oh, this is what you have to do to be successful. Mm-hmm. This is what you have to do. So excited about that. But, um, yeah, John, we need, we need some help with facilities. Yeah. Facilities and gear and, and travel and all that. Um, yeah, we need help from the alumni, need help from donors, no doubt about that one. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> um, yeah, we're, bu- we're building a foundation for something better. Uh, we're doing it on the football field. We're doing it really across all going, the sports. Going to be special in a year or two. Yeah, yeah, across all the sports. And we're doing it um, also at the athletic department level. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please reach out and, and help financially support the support the university's athletic department and, and the football team as well as the other uh, teams that are very worthy of your support. Um, we, need to, we need to close the show with some shout-outs. I think I think there's uh, coach. You mentioned that you had a shout out that you wanted to do. Um, Austin, you got any shout outs you you want to? I mean, you got wife and kids. Let's shout out the Leusa family. Go ahead. Yeah, just shout out to my wife. You know, she's the, she's the foundation of our little family, and then my two beautiful daughters. Yeah. Um, what are their names? So my oldest daughter's name is Nicena. Nicena. Uh, and then our our uh, our newest girl, her name is Grace. Grace, beautiful names. Yeah. If you have a third girl, it means you have to become a coach. You now, uh, you would then have the coach's right. curse. Coach, coach? <laughs> yeah, all that's girls right. means you have to coach. Uh, Lyle, shout outs. I can't say the same. I don't have a wife and kids, but shout out to my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, everybody that comes to the games every single weekend. They're out there, even when we play at ASU, staying throughout the storm and everything. Shout out to my family and obviously the rest of the O line. So awesome, yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, big shout out to Travis Harris coming across for the game. Great, great seeing my old friend and having him with us for the weekend. And then Connie and Mike Davis came up from Louisiana. Connie works for Southwest Hosts and does all of our. It, this is when you know you're doing things right when you build relationships with people that you're in business with and not necessarily supposed to be friends. But um, Connie books all of our hotels and does a lot of stuff for us travel wise um, that helps Ryan Hunt and I be able to actually coach and not just be scheduling and and doing um, agenda and itineraries all the time but helps a bunch with that but um really really enjoyed having connie and mike with us and i think they had a good time they came up for the ball game and then left to hit vegas for a couple days before heading back to the boot awesome awesome well uh look for for all of those that got uh highlighted on the show we also needed to, to my shout out personally ed riley ah, there you go mm-hmm. yeah he plays center here uh he's a warrior an he absolute gets, warrior yeah he gets dinged up um, and and you can see, you know, he's 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 got some uh, some physical ailments. That dude, he's the kind of guy you want in the trenches with you. He's an absolute beast. He's a warrior. Uh, that's my shout out and my spotlight. Uh, John, John give Ryan. give them all a shout out. Colin Gardner, who, who he, he played ball played ball with us yesterday. Uh, excuse me on Saturday and did a great job at left tackle and then goes to California to watch his wife play in a soccer game on Sunday. Awesome. He's headed back here now. So shout out to him and Whitney. At Lyle's our left guard. Ed is our center, our right guards, and it's Kyle Safarchoke and. Um, Loy Mata. What is Loy Mata? He uses 15 last names. Which one is it? <laughs> Maunga. Maunga. There you go. Maunga. Yeah, yeah Loy Mata Maunga uh, at, at right guard and then Austin here at right tackle. Just great job last week. Yeah. Well, look, for, for, uh, for Coach Delane, for the O line family, uh, I'm John Smith. We'll wrap this show. Go T Birds. Go Thunderbirds.